You had one job, Nike. One job. Let's just roll the bumper. Hey, who's got it better than us? No! Welcome back to Jersey Head University, the intersection of authentic sportswear and passionate storytelling. Before we get started, I just want to address the elephant in the room. If it's your first time here, consider supporting our channel by running the triple option, subscribing, liking, and commenting on today's video. So we've made it to part three of the Euros Tour. Will this be the perfect capstone to our trilogy, or did we take a step backward? Let's talk about all that and more coming up right now. When Nike took over the NFL licensing deal in 2012, they immediately went to work, implementing several changes to the league's uniforms. Old mesh jerseys were replaced with the latest performance fabrics. Some teams received a complete makeover to their previous design, and a new era was upon us. The first major change under Nike took place in 2017, when the Elite 51 jersey was succeeded by the Vapor Untouchable jersey. Going for a more simplistic design that simultaneously improved performance, these jerseys featured fewer seams, a sleeker design, and an overall more simplistic look, keeping the NFL at the forefront of performance and style. In 2023, another shakeup would occur in the NFL uniform lineup, this time with the unveiling of the Vapor Fuse jersey template. Like before, Nike took inspiration from the collegiate ranks. Originally named Vapor Fusion, this jersey was first worn by our favorite guinea pig of Nike, the Oregon Ducks, in 2019. Interestingly, Nike quietly did a test run of these jerseys in 2020 when a couple Seahawks players wore the new template on a Monday night football game. It's likely the new jersey saw a delayed rollout due to the worldwide supply chain issues caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, as the Florida Gators also planned for a much earlier rollout. Once the jersey did finally get its unveiling, it was renamed Vapor Fuse and saw a mass release at both the collegiate and professional ranks. Unlike the Vapor Untouchable, the Vapor Fuse chassis went back to an abundance of panels, featured a newly designed collar grille, and new ventilation throughout the uniform. How does Nike's new uniforms hold up? Let's talk about that. So let's first look at the game issued version. Starting with the Vapor Fuse, Nike went to this black size tag, but the thing that stood out to me was that it said 2021. Now it is possible that this was planned for use in a color rush game, but to my knowledge, the Cowboys did not wear Vapor Fuse at all in 2021. I think most likely this jersey was used as a sample. Next, we move down to the neck grill. Unlike the Vapor Untouchable jersey, which had a triangular pattern, this one looks to be more of a heart shape. When I first saw these in Oregon jerseys my first thought was gosh I hope they don't have these in the NFL and maybe the league just skips over this design altogether but that didn't happen and we've got these jerseys now so one major aesthetic change of course is the um, additional paneling up at the top you've got the chevron design that separates the shoulders which is not perforated at all with the rest of the body which does have perforations. As you move further down, you'll notice that this jersey has quite a bit of paneling. You've got the main panel in the middle of the body, and then you've got these side panels here that are very reminiscent of the Elite 51 in that the armpit and the lower torso area is separated. The middle panel and the side panels have perforations, and the bottom panel does not. With the Cowboys, you've got this kiss cut stretch twill design here. And on the shoulders, you've got the, the double stars and sleeve numbers that are also kiss cut stretch twill. This jersey is a line cut, or as it's referred to now, a cap cut. It's essentially sleeveless. 
On the back, you've got the uh, the team name here, Cowboys, on a nameplate. The Vapor Fuse jersey on the back, it's also divided into several panels. So as we move down, we'll notice we've got one panel up here where the nameplate is. We've got a major body panel here, a panel for the armpit area, and another panel for the lower body. But that's the back of the jersey, guys. And here we've got the retail version of the Vapor Fuse. Material-wise, it does feel very similar to the player-issued version. However, with this being a retail version, it is cut a little bit looser. It's gonna feel more comfortable on you, and the fabrics will be a little bit lighter. So starting off, we've got the same neck grill here at the base of the collar, and we've got a very similar black-colored Nike jock tag. You see the, um, the same chevron design that separates the shoulders from the rest of the body. And the rest of the paneling is also going to be similar. One thing to note about the retail jerseys is that they do have perforations. They're a lot harder to notice. And um, yeah, they're not as pronounced. Also, unlike the players' jerseys, the retail jerseys will have this Nike jock tag at the bottom hemline. And of course, with all retail jerseys, not made in the US. Team issue jersey that's made in the US, retail jersey that's made in Honduras. And just like the game issued version, we've got an abundance of paneling on the back. So it looks like there's two upper panels here on the upper back, separated by this hem. Of course, this line here is covered up by the nameplate. As we move down, we'll see the same metal panel for the majority of the body, and the sides are gonna be separated by a upper and lower panel. One detail we have not yet mentioned, unlike the replica game jerseys and the limited jerseys, the elite jerseys do have short sleeves and they are cuffed. So when you put this on, it's going to look very similar to a skill cut jersey that the actual player wears. And there we go. That's the back of the retail Vapor Fuse jersey. Let's wrap up our segment on the Vapor Fuse jersey by showing a template that slightly deviates from the norm. So here we've got a Cincinnati Bengals jersey for number nine, Joe Burrow. And you'll notice right away that it doesn't have the V-shaped chevron design. Instead, because of the Bengals script logo, they had to alter the base template of the jersey. If we had the V-shaped chevron design here, it would cut right into the letters. So to accommodate for that, they moved that seam further up and made it a straight seam. This is just one example of a variation. Every team's gonna be different. Many will try to follow the base template as closely as possible, but based on your team's design, there could be some variations, and it's important to know that. For example, some teams that have a different color side panel could have additional seams in this area that divide this panel up even more. Another great example is the Los Angeles Chargers. Because of the lightning bolt design, they're not able to fit the Nike swoosh as high as they do on some other teams. So instead, what they did is create an extra panel down here and move the swoosh further down. Back to this Bengals jersey. Other than the straight cut, everything else on this particular jersey is fairly standard. You've got that neck grill that's a unifying feature for all the Vapor Fuse jerseys. Similar size tag compared to our other jerseys. And hey, look at that. Once again, the Nike swoosh is sewn lower on the sleeves instead of higher like it is for most teams. In this case for the Bengals, it's to account for the shoulder stripes. The paneling for the body is going to be pretty standard. You've got the side panels here that are cut into an upper and a lower region. The Bengals logo is fully embroidered and you've got kiss cut stretch 12 numbers. Standard jock tag for the Vapor Fuse jerseys. I really hate reading these new uh, care tags, but this one looks like it's 88% nylon, 12% spandex, made in Honduras. Coming to the back of the jersey, we've got Burl's name sewn on a nameplate. As we move further down, we've got the number nine, slightly bigger than the front number, and this is also Kiss Cut Stretch 12. And the side panels that are cut in half for the upper and lower parts of the jersey. But there we go, guys. That's the back of the jersey. Quick bonus round. Let's do one last jersey just to show another variation. So we've seen this on a couple of jerseys already, but one thing the NFL is starting to do more of is putting a slogan inside neckline. This one says, protect the nest. Bengals jersey that we saw earlier also had a slogan, but the significant variation we want to show on this jersey 
is the perforations inside the numbers. This was not done before to my knowledge, and I believe the Arizona Cardinals are the first team to have perforations for their numbers. This is something that we've seen more of in other sports. Uh, NBA jerseys typically have perforations in their numbers and a couple jerseys in the NHL also have this. This was not really a big thing in football. Of course, Arizona was the first team to kind of unveil this detail in their jerseys. And as of the time of this recording, a couple other teams such as the Detroit Lions and the Denver Broncos have also incorporated perforations into their new jerseys. Everything else in the jersey is pretty standard. You've got that new neck grill that's seen on all the Vapor Fuse jerseys, textured chrome NFL shield, size tag is pretty standard. And for the Cardinals, they were actually able to fit in the entire script logo without changing the V-shaped chevron design. So that's pretty cool. We talked about the perforated numbers earlier, and of course, the abundance of panels that we've seen on all the Vapor Fuse jerseys. The TV numbers are not perforated. It's a pretty dull design otherwise. Um, no special logos or graphics on the sleeve. It's just a Nike swoosh. Standard Nike tag, 100% polyester, made in Honduras. The back of the jersey is also going to be pretty standard. We do have the Arizona Cardinals logo sewn on the upper back. And this is a plastic uh, chrome material. It's not your traditional embroidered patch. We've got Kyler Murray's name sewn on a nameplate and the perforated numbers that we've seen on the front. Everything else is pretty standard. And there we go. That's the back of the jersey. And there we go, guys. That's a look at the Nike Vapor Fuse football jersey. I'd love to hear what you think. Personally, I'm very lukewarm on this design. When the Vapor Untouchable jersey first released, it was touted as being superior to the Elite 51 because of the lack of panels and grab points. So it was kind of ironic that for the next iteration, they went back to an abundance of panels. Overall, I think the jersey looks way too busy and a little bit way too edgy for the NFL. And I was honestly kind of hoping that they would just skip this jersey altogether like they had done with some other jerseys that only saw a college release. But we got it and we'll be stuck with it for at least the next couple seasons. But that's not all. In June of 2024, the Oregon Ducks unveiled the Generation O jersey template. How many of those changes will be adapted into the NFL? Only time will tell. Wrapping up our discussion on the Vapor Fuse jersey, we've officially reached the end of our Nike NFL Eras Tour. For now. As always, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. We've got some really cool products in the pipeline, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and turn on notifications for all the latest updates. Alright, that'll do it for this episode. I'll catch you guys next time.